I'm a co-op advisor with the University of Cincinnati and work primarily with engineering and IT students. Uh, she asked, would you differentiate these certification certificates if you recommend focusing on if a student is uh, completing or has recently completed an IT degree versus computer science or computer engineering? If a student is unsuccessful in finding a directly related cybersecurity co-op, what fields, companies, or roles would you recommend? Um, you know, uh, and what niche fields or related skills uh, do, do you think it's surprising, uh, my, my, they might find surprising or be important to know? I, you know, I think a lot of this is is sort of going back to things that we've talked about throughout mm -hmm. here is, is where do you start? Where do you start looking? And so I guess my, you know, if, you, if there's anything you want to add uh, regarding these questions, I think the, the the answer in this case is listen to this webinar, right? <laughs> yeah, and then reach out. <laughs> and reach out. You know, reach out. Yeah. I'm sure all of us are, well, we're all busy, but I'm sure sending right. a message and saying, hey, you know, I heard you on the webinar. I'd be interested to know, you know, if you could help me with something and then we can go from there. Um, this is a hard one because there's a lot of places where you can find jobs. Um, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, um, our website, Blacks and Cyber, um, the different schools, their websites. Um, again, it it's it's really difficult to say what a student should do as far as like a niche because it's based on what the student wants to do and what their skills are and what they see themselves doing. Um, I mean, I worked for a casino for four years. I didn't even think about cybersecurity in a casino because I was working in the government for the entire my entire career. So, you know, every every industry has a need for cyber and IT people, regardless of the industry. Um, and I think the financial industry and like the retail, those spaces probably needed a little bit more than the traditional companies that we think of because they're always getting hit. Right. <laughs> Critical infrastructure. You know, that that area is a really booming area as far as security goes, too. So um, just got to go out there and look. Yeah. I want to actually put this back on the university. So we have some strategic partnership with the university in Georgia. We actually are partners with, uh, we have a educational partnership even with UNLV and even like you know, one of the oldest uh, university, Bowie University, that we're trying to work with. Them. But the problem is, is the educators and the school faculty has their own set of things that they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And we offer our products and services at no cost for education and research, whichever, and depending on whichever research tier you may be, the, and you know, they need to commit the time to working with the companies to say like, okay, you know, we will put add you to this, but it's it's a lot of give and take, unfortunately. And for yeah. me, it's kind of like give them all the access. We'll do the training. We'll do like all the stuff and give the students opportunity to listen and learn and everything else. But then we we and then we're a make ourselves available. But how much are the faculties actually committing to the students? And they're saying, okay, you know, we're gonna teach about all these. <clears throat> you know, we got this companies lined up, but there's always a I hate to say this, there's always a financial transaction or some sort of a mm -hmm. lateral that has to happen. And that's the unfortunate and the people that suffer are the students. Now, right. for this particular, I think, uh, professor Go, um, the, you know, it, I would just tell the students like what Mary said, socialized network, and like what Vic said, have a vision what you want to do. But, you know, they're still young sprouts coming out, so they're going to have lots of ideas. And, but it's like they need that constant, like, feeding of information, like their social media, unfortunately. But uh, it, there's no, I don't think there's one solution, but um, kind of like going back to what Mary and Vic said, it's like you need to have passion and you need to have focus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Internships, apprenticeships would yeah. be a great uh, resource for the university to consider. Um, I know the Department of Labor is working with um, a group out of Maryland called ICF, and it's called the Cybersecurity Youth Apprenticeship Initiative. And so the Department of Labor has put aside funding to help place graduate and undergraduate students with companies who are looking to pursue cybersecurity. So uh, the Cybersecurity Youth Apprenticeship Initiative uh, with Mike Lawrence and his folks is a great uh, resource that they can tap into. 
Um, at UTSA, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the School of Business. Uh, they have a UTSA cyber range. Um, and on this cyber range, they're offering training and courses to help you know, operationalize what you're getting as a graduate and undergraduate student. And in this flexible, hyper-realistic environment, you can be an analyst and actually see what it is that you would have to perform as a task if you are a SOC analyst. And, and, and understand you know, that you have to find you know, the source of this web defacement. You have to find the source of this Apache you know, uh, vulnerability or this DDoS. Is it coming from your organization or is it coming from outside your organization? And how do you work together as a team? Because if you think that you're gonna do this as a graduate student by yourself, sorely mistaken. It, it's, <laughs> it's just too much for you to try to, to, yeah. to you uh, digest, but once again, InfoSec Skills has has a great resource. You know, you know, check in with you know the staff that Jack has assembled, um, and you know, give give Megan Sawal Saw, Sawali a call. Uh, I mean, these folks are you know, I'm here. You know, hey, look, like, like I tell folks that my passion is to help you reach your potential. You're a snowflake. You're not going to be a Vic. You're going to be a Gene. You're going to be a Mary. You're going to be a Chris. Or are you going to be, you know, a Jack? Are you going to be a, a Megan? You know, be who you are. My my commitment is to help you, you know, get closer, one step closer to that step, so that you can pivot. And we already talked about that before. But you know, you are here for a purpose. Don't exit this life without knowing that. And then uh, I will plug uh, my friend uh, Jennifer Redman talking about, you know, self care. We have too many information security professionals who are not taking care of themselves. Um, don't, yeah. please, please don't make a permanent decision for a temporary situation. Don't beat yourself over the head about, you know, well, I, well, I failed my team or I failed my organization. You learned and and we need you. So, so please don't ever think that, you know, because you aren't, you know, uh, the, the Mark Zuckerberg or the or the Bill Gates and, and you haven't you know risen to the level of you know Cook and and you know, you are here to be you please 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 I'm begging you you know we, we've got we've got this issue with mental health and and we have a responsibility and, and we need you so so please don't make that kind of decision. New episodes of the Cyberwork podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn. Stay up to date on all things Cyberwork.